In this video, we're talking about the best Ryzen laptops for video editing. Which one should you buy? Should you get one of the dedicated GPU? Should you get one with an integrated GPU? And are you doing 4K or 1080p? Well, I've taken 80% of these laptops through my own benchmarks. So you can see benchmark scores. We're gonna look at thermal temperatures. We're gonna look at all of the different intricacies. We're gonna look from budget to high end. Let's just get into it. Let's get rocking. I'm Benji Kaiser. If you're new to the channel, this is where you're going to find the best tech and tools for creative professionals. If you're curious about the exact pricing or availability of any of these models as we're going through the video, you can head down into the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do make a purchase through that link, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. All right, what else can you expect in this video? Jumping right into things. Like I said, I've personally tested 80% of these laptops and you're going to see benchmark texts in Geekbench 5, Cinebench R20, Photoshop, Premiere Pro, Apple. After Effects, DaVinci Resolve, 3D modeling software such as Autodesk, SolidWorks, and PTC Creo. We're going to see thermal temperatures and some component usage, recommended use cases for each processor, and of course, you're going to find affiliate links in the description below to check on that pricing and availability. But let me ask you, what laptop are you considering? And what is the use case of that laptop? Comment below, let me know, let's talk about it, see if you're making a good choice for your laptop pick. Let's take a look at the processor lineup and what to expect in this video. So first and foremost, we're going to be looking at the Ryzen 5 4500U laptops, the Ryzen 7 4700U, the Ryzen 5 4600H, the Ryzen 7 4800H, and the 4800HS, as well as the Ryzen 9 4900HS. These are the most common and popular laptop processors from Ryzen found in laptops on the market. First, I'm going to talk about 1080p versus 4K capabilities. I know a lot of people look towards something like a budget-friendly Ryzen 7 4700U, and they ask, hey, can I edit 4K footage on this laptop? I would say no, it does not have the smooth ability to edit 4K. 1080p is going to be doable, for sure, and you'll see that um, some of my benchmark tests as we're going through these laptops, that 1080p is definitely capable, and I use this as a 1080p on-the-go video editing laptop, even for myself. Now, if you're getting into 4K, I'd recommend a H-series processor, versus the U series. It's gonna be able to perform hot, it's gonna be able to push out more heat, which ultimately will give you more performance and it will make for a better laptop. And then also these H series laptops will come with dedicated GPUs. The dedicated GPU will help tremendously during the 4K playback. And we're gonna talk about that and look at that as we're going through the specific laptops. But U series versus H series, the 1080p video editing is gonna be in the U series the 4K editing is gonna be in the H series and you'll see that in the benchmark test. Let's keep moving forward. All right, first up in the lineup is the Lenovo IdeaPad Flex 5. This laptop comes with the AMD Ryzen 5 4500U with the Radeon 6 graphics and 16 gigs of RAM. For the 1080p playback, drop frames out of 16,177, we saw 3,327 drop frames at full quality. 973 at half quality and at fourth quality 656. Can this edit 1080p? Yes, but you will experience a handful of drop frames, which could create somewhat of a jumpy editing experience, but it's definitely capable. We saw nine minute clips exported out of Premiere Pro of a 1080p quality at two minutes and 53 seconds, and a nine minute clip out of DaVinci Resolve using the free version, we saw an export time of seven minutes and 40 seconds. To render out um, motion design. There was a, we had 7,240 motion design frames in that project and it took 35 minutes and 56 seconds. This is not a great motion design laptop, um, especially when we're looking at the After Effects benchmarks. They were basically not applicable. All right, now moving forward, we're going to jump right into the Acer Swift 3 with the Ryzen 7 4700U. Um, we have the Radeon 7 graphics and 16 gigs of RAM inside of this Acer Swift 3. Now the 1080p playback dropped frames out of 16,177. This laptop saw 1,557 drop frames at full quality, 177 at half quality, and 113 at fourth quality. To export the nine minute clip out of Premiere Pro to 1080p took two minutes and 32 seconds, and the nine minute clip out of DaVinci Resolve, the free version, 
to 1080p took five minutes and 23 seconds. To render out the 7,200 in motion design frames took eight minutes and four seconds. And then once again, After Effects was not applicable. It did not handle After Effects well. So I would definitely recommend the dedicated GPU for your After Effects work not these mobile laptops. But these have their use case. These would be fantastic laptops for Photoshop, uh, for Figma, for Sketch, for InDesign, for Illustrator. You'd get fantastic use cases. And we'll talk about that even more later in the video. Next up is the Acer Nitro 5. This is our first dedicated GPU and Ryzen 5 4600H processor. Um, this has the GeForce GTX 1650 and it has 16 gigs of RAM. This is our first 4K laptop. So for the 4K laptop, we saw drop frame rates out of the 16,177 at full quality, 3,150 drop frames at half quality, 127 and at fourth quality, we saw zero drop frames. Now to export that nine minute clip, Premiere Pro 4K export took four minutes and 28 seconds and out of DaVinci Resolve, that same clip to 4K export using the free version was seven minutes and five seconds. Now for rendering out the 7,240 motion design frames, it took five minutes and 37 seconds and the After Effects benchmark score was a 710 and the After Effects render score was a 377. Now th these scores will make more sense once we check out the benchmark charts uh, later in the video. So hang on for that. You'll see the head to head comparisons of all of these laptops lined up. I just want to get you these initial scores scores so you can kind of get more understanding as it relates to the specific laptop and the specs of the laptop. Next up, we have the HP Pavilion Gaming Ryzen 5 4600H version. This laptop um, has not been in my studio, but you can relate the benchmarks that you saw with the Ryzen 5 to this Pavilion Gaming laptop. This comes with the Ryzen 5 4600H, the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650, and 8 gigs of RAM. Next up is the Asus TUF A15, the Ryzen 5 4600H edition. This again, Ryzen 5 4600H, GTX 1650, 8 gigs of RAM, and a sorry excuse for color gamut range. Great performance for the laptop, but the color gamut range is not good. Next up is the Dell G5 SE with the Ryzen 5 4600H. I've been hearing a lot of good things about this laptop. Good build quality, great uh, cooling ability with the good vents. Um, and this laptop comes in at around uh, $1,000 with the Ryzen 5 4600H, GTX 1650, 16 gigs of RAM. That's what makes this one a little bit more expensive than the other ones is that increased RAM. But again, the color gamut range is quite poor, but definitely check before you buy because there are numerous options. I saw some options with better color gamut range, but you need to make sure you're doing your due diligence because a lot of these laptop vendors produce so many different variations of their laptops that it can be confusing. So take the time, seek it out, ask questions, comment below, whatever it takes, and we'll help you get the right laptop for your needs. Next up is the Ryzen 7 4800H edition of the Asus Tough A15. Um, this one comes with the AMD Ryzen 7 4800H, the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1660 Ti, and the 16 gigs of RAM. Again, a poor excuse for color gamut range, but what do you do? My benchmark tests for the 4K playback drop frame rates um, out of the 16,177, we saw full quality drop frames of 1,215. At half quality, 173, and at fourth quality, zero drop frames. Now, the Premiere Pro 9-minute clip, uh, Premiere Pro export 4K, 7 minutes and 20 seconds. For the 9-minute clip DaVinci Resolve free version, the 4K export took 6 minutes and 37 seconds. To render out the 7,240 motion design frames took 3 minutes and 37 seconds. And then we saw a killer After Effects benchmark of 8 minutes, 8 minutes, of 812, and then the After Effects render benchmark score of 666. Next up is the Lenovo Legion 5 Ryzen 7 4800H. Again, we're gonna see very similar benchmarks out of this laptop uh, because it has almost identical specs with the Ryzen 7 4800H, GTX 1660 Ti, 16 gigs of RAM. But one thing I really want you to be aware of is these color gamuts. Now, if you get a 120 hertz screen variant, you're gonna get 62% sRGB and 46% Adobe RGB. But if you get a 144 hertz screen variant, you're gonna get 99% sRGB and 80% Adobe RGB. So check before you buy. There's a lot of options. I, I wanna keep 
saying this because uh, people have gotten laptops in the past, didn't do their due diligence, and ended up with something that they were disappointed with. Next up is the Asus Zephyrus G14. This is the Ryzen 7 4800HS edition. Comes with the GeForce GTX 1650, 12 gigs of v, uh, 12 gigs of RAM, and a 512 gig SSD. Has a 14 inch screen with a color gamut range of 91% sRGB and 60% Adobe RGB. The Asus Zephyrus Rogue uh, G15, great laptop as well. Slightly different build than the Zephyrus G14. This is going to look more like the Strix G17. So it still has that Zephyrus classification, um, but you're going to see a lot of similarities between like the Strix G17, which has the i7 uh, 10750. Um, so it's going to be an Intel, and this is going to be the Ryzen. So this one comes with the Ryzen 7 4800HS, GTX 1660 Ti Max Q, 16 gigs of RAM, and it has a couple different screen variants. So as always, keep an eye out for that. The pricing may vary according to the screen variant you choose. The HP Omen 15. This has been one of my favorite laptops I've had in the studio recently. Comes with the Ryzen 7 4800H, GTX 1660 Ti, 16 gigs of RAM, and a great color accuracy. During the 4K playback drop frame test out of the 16,177, at full quality we saw 1,185 frames dropped, at half quality 126, and at fourth quality zero drop frames. The 9-minute export out of Premiere Pro took 4 minutes and 13 seconds out of DaVinci Resolve, 9 minutes and 3 seconds. And for those motion design renders, 3 minutes and 45 seconds. For the After Effects benchmark, we saw a 744, and then for the render, a 498. So pretty solid scores there um, from the HP Omen. I like this laptop. It's got aluminum top cover. It's got very quiet keyboard, wonderful trackpad. Just a great all-around laptop. Next up is the Asus Zephyrus G14 with the Ryzen 9 4900 HS. This has the GeForce RTX 2060 Max-Q and 32 gigs of RAM. Has great color accuracy as well, and as far as the benchmark tests, it dominates. At full quality, we saw only three drop frames at half quality, zero, and at fourth quality, zero. To export that nine minute 4K clip took three minutes and two seconds out of Premiere Pro, and out of DaVinci Resolve using the free version, it took seven minutes and 55 seconds. To render out the 7,240 motion design frames took three minutes and six seconds, and After Effects benchmark took seven minutes and 70 so I keep doing that, seven minutes, no, it's not seven minutes. The score of 775, forgive me for that. Um, and then also we saw the After Effects render benchmark of 615. Okay, let's jump right into the head-to-head -head scores now. This is what we've been waiting for because this gives you a really good perspective on each of the laptops. For Ryzen Photoshop, um, the laptops, you can see the lineup here. Uh, really, it's really priced to performance. It, it makes sense. You start at the higher performing laptop, like the Ryzen Zephyrus G14, you're going to get the best performance out of Photoshop. And then as you work your way down to, say, the Idea uh, Pad Flex 5, you only lose about 100 points. So if you're somebody who's going to be into Photoshop, rarely going to be video editing, then I would go for one of the mobile processors, the Ryzen 7 um, 4700U or the Ryzen 5 4500U. You're going to be in great shape. But if you're somebody who's going to be doing video editing and Photoshop work, then any of these upper tier Ryzen H processors is going to be the way to go. Next up for the Ryzen Photoshop thermal benchmarks, you're going to see the best cooling out of the IdeaPad Flex 5, then the HR Nitro 5, the Swift 3, and then followed by the HP Omen. So if you're somebody who's looking for a fast laptop that also runs cool for video editing and Photoshop, the Omen's going to be great. The Ryzen Zephyrus, uh, the Ryzen Asus Zephyrus G14 um, got some of the hottest thermal temperatures. For the Ryzen Photoshop CPU usage, as you see, the Lenovo IdeaPad Flex 5 was really pushing it um, because it had to use a lot of juice out of that processor. Stepping down with the Acer Swift 3 and then from there each processor having more cores and threads is going to get a better usage of that spec out. The After Effects Ryzen benchmark score, as you see the Asus Tough A15 with that really high TDP was able to pull out even more performance than the Asus Zephyrus G14 with an 812 over the 775 and 744. The HP Omen didn't run that uh, CPU as hot, so it saw a little bit lower um, abilities inside of After Effects. And then, of course, as we saw here, After Effects is almost unusable. I'm sure you could use it, but it would not be a smooth experience for the mobile processor in the Swift 3 and the Flex 5. For the After Effects render, we see very similar results coming from the Asus Tough A15, the Asus Zephyrus G14, HP Omen, and Nitro 5. 
For the Cinebench R20 multi-core scores, we see the HP Omen topping the charts. Getting really hot though, like we said, we saw around 85-ish degrees Celsius. And then for the peak temps, we saw in the high 90s. So it's definitely a hot CPU. Um, if you want more of a cooler CPU at that same um, CPU SKU, so these both have the Ryzen 74800H, but the HP Omen runs it a little bit cooler. So that could be a big benefit for you there. Um, and then we see the scores trickle down from there. For the Geekbench single core performance, um, we see them pretty even. Um, and that's because Ryzen has not really been the contender for single core. Where you see big wins is in the multi-core. So you see a big spread start to happen here in the multi-core because as you increase the cores and threads, obviously we're going to have more performance. So if you're somebody who's doing a lot of multitasking, then you're going to want to go for the uh, either the Ryzen 9 4900HS or the Ryzen 7 4800H. For the Premiere Pro 4K to 4K export, here is the scores lined up so you can actually see them in comparison. Of course, we have the Ryzen 9 4900HS, the Ryzen 7 4800H, the Ryzen 5 4600H, um, the Ryzen 7 4800H, the Ryzen 7 4700U, and the Ryzen 7 40, Ryzen 5 4500U. Again here, same thing with each processor as you move forward looking through these benchmarks. And for the 4K export thermal benchmarks, you can see that we have pretty solid thermal temps um, out of all of these processors. Obviously with the Asus Tough A15 and the Asus Zephyrus G14 being the hottest laptops regarding the thermal benchmarks. For the Ryzen Premiere Pro CPU usage, we see the Acer Nitro 5, HP Omen, and Swift 3 really pushing a lot of CPU usage, and the Zephyrus G14 and the IdeaPad Flex 5 not having as much, but obviously this is 1080p and this is 4K, so these aren't really necessarily a fair comparison because doing 1080p obviously takes a little less processing power. and Ryzen lineup per use case. So this is what I was talking about earlier in the video, uh, what I think would be the best use case for each of these processors. So for the Lenovo Flex 5, the recommended use cases are graphic design, um, 1080p video editing, photo editing, illustrating, productivity tasks, web browsing, digital painting, and web design. That's gonna be the Ryzen 5 4500U. For the Ryzen 7 4700U inside the Acer Swift 3, the recommended use cases, again, are gonna be graphic design, 1080p video editing, photo editing, illustrating, productivity tasks, web browsing, digital painting, and web design. You're gonna be able to do all these things a little bit better, a little bit faster than the Ryzen 5 4500U, but again, I'm not gonna recommend 4K video editing out of that processor. For the Ryzen 5 4600H, recommended use cases are all the prior, plus um, 4K video editing, motion design, light 3D modeling, development, and architecture. For the Ryzen 7 4800H, we're gonna see all of the prior use cases, plus 4K video editing, motion design, 3D modeling, development, and architecture. So when I say 3D modeling, I can think that I can do a lot of 3D modeling, not just light 3D modeling. And then for the Ryzen 9 4900HS, all the prior plus 4K video editing, motion design, 3D modeling, development, and architecture as well. If you're curious about the exact pricing of any of these models as we're making our way through the video, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do make a purchase through that link, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. If you're interested in more relevant content, you can click or tap the screen over here. Otherwise, keep editing, keep designing, keep creating. My name is Benji Kaiser, and I'll see you in the next video.